Hey everybody, how are you? Happy Friday. This is a, uh, hang on, there we go. Here's the Santa Cruz, the D1. I filmed a, no, I haven't filmed a video on this, but I've talked about it a little bit. Let me move this, so. Let me see, what was I playing before? What's that thing? Recorded behavior is never the same as natural behavior. So I play very different things when it's just me sitting around playing guitar. But as soon as I play with you guys and I start playing, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna play the same things I've played 7,000 times. Anyway, um, welcome to Guitar Hunter 110. Uh, I had my assistant, I had Caitlin go through and count how many of these we've done. We, you, me, all of us, together, we've done 110 of these. So, hello, welcome, I'm Jeremy, and uh, looks like a bunch of friends here. Hey, oh, Rasmus is here! Daniel's here from Philly? Um, no low ballers. I know what I got here, dude. You are here. You're here for, you're here for it. Darcel is here. Tuning in from upstate New York. Stan Step coming in from Minnesota. Greetings from sunny Orlando. Um, Rasmus, Daniel. And, um, yes. Hello, everyone. It's a beautiful day on the fringe of Casey Mo. Uh, but this will change in a bit. It will no longer be beautiful. You will no longer be at the fringe of KC Mo. Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my grandpa always called it Missouri. I think he was one of the last people that really said that. Uh, but, yeah, Mr. Brian. Uh, Patrick's here. Brian, or Brian's here from Detroit. Patty Pasta from Ottawa. Hey, I uh, booked a flight to the, well, booked a flight to Quebec. Um, Gonna go hang out with the guys uh, with Boucher Guitars um, in June, middle of June. We're gonna be up there, so maybe we can coordinate it. That you know, Canadian friends, if you're close, if you're anywhere close to to there, we can get together. Terry coming in from Tyler, Texas. I'm gonna move the microphone back. Sorry if that was loud. Um, Kelly, hey, it's officially happening, man. Uh, the um, it shipped yesterday the e the e sixteen so I'll email you about that sorry for the long delay um, Evan Ogden's here hey buddy hello um, Alden man I love this has been a really fun it's a fun group of people and it's always fun on Fridays to kind of take get this so hey John Washburn uh, hello from the other side of the state looking at a, oh that's what it is looking at a tornado warning so that's what, it is beautiful but it's about to be Thunderstormy. That's not great. Um, it's supposed to be super warm here next week. Um, I have two packages I want to open. Maybe I'll just open and get first reactions. And I'll These have been in the packages for a couple weeks. I wanted to make a video about them. I'm just going to open them now. First, let me play this guitar for just a second. So you can't see more of it. I'll play it very high. David, do you have the Maybell? Oh man, that is, that thing is so good. So this is a Santa Cruz. This is a Slothead D1. It is super, super light. It is just insanely beautiful mahogany on the back. Um, I think this is three pounds, 15 ounces. I think in that video, I made a mistake. I, I said something wrong. But man, it's a, it is a cannon. these lights do you like the purple should I change to a different color hang on I thought about this I need to go to a blue on these because my titles coming up are red oh flat picking anything says my right 12 fret dread is about three pounds 10 ounces or less that's amazing 
Um, is it better than the SJ you recently had? Uh, yeah, the SJ is such a skinny neck. I can't get into it. Evan says, any Torfret slot dreads for under 1500 um, If you could find a D15 S, yeah, D15 SM, they're kind of rare. You can find a D16 SM. Dr the dread part is probably hard. You could find a triple O. You could find, if you could find a triple O 16 SGT, that is excellent. I owned one of those a while ago. Um, so yeah. Purple is good, then blue. Yeah, well, let's let's see. So this is what the titles are going to look like later when I get into them. They'll look like this. That works. Purple and red, that works. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Jeremy, what's the oldest guitar you have at the moment? 69, D35. 60, 70, D40. Um... Yeah, I don't have anything that old. 86? Let me look around. I don't have anything that old. 68, right here. I don't have anything super old. Your mandolin is definitely the, the oldest thing here. Holy cow! David, thank you, man. Um, David owns my Maybell tenor. I guess it's his. I guess I owned his. Maybell Tenor, which that thing is amazing. I just I found that thing kind of out of the blue and just loved it. And um, yeah, man. So anyway, that's so thank you. Uh, so great of you. Thank you uh, for the super chat. Also, um, some, sometimes, and I don't mean to, sometimes questions and stuff go so fast it's hard for me to keep up and I try and catch up and it's really like ADD uh causing for me and so if you have a burning question and i miss it um i hate saying pay money and get a question answered but it is it's their way and it's by design from youtube blame it on them um but it's way easier for me to see because they just kind of float and i can see them um right away so oh boy i zoomed in on my screen okay i have two things i'm gonna open i've been i've been wondering how to do this and i'm just gonna do it and i'll give I'll give this thing away. I think the other stuff I have to I have to make an actual video. But this, oh, I don't want to turn it that way so you can see my address. Um, this went to the PO box. We're good. But in here is supposed to be the most comfortable strap of all straps ever. So this is a company that has come out with a really cool guitar strap. So let's open it up. All right. The Amumu. So, this is the Amumu. We design, you rock. That's funny. I like that. I like that line. We do. Holy cow. That's the widest strap I've ever seen. Look at that thing. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh my gosh. That is, this is the heaviest strap. Like the widest base strap I have ever seen. Look at that. It's like as wide as my face. <laughs> Ooh. So um, the Amumu strap is for the especially heavy bases. It's who they're mostly aiming at. Um, but it's like seatbelt material, and then it's this really squashy. Um, some of the guitar, some of the case straps. So like uh, the Fender and the Taylor Aero cases, and whatever Fender calls theirs. This, the I know the part number now. The fifteen twenty. Um, those cases. They have the really comfortable, really squishy, it's like some kind of foam, but it's pressed in here. So you can see it's like got that heavy texture. I'm trying to hide my face. So it zooms in on that. Anyway, holy cow, let me get a tape measure. This is, must be like five inches across. Um, okay, four inch, four and a half. Sorry, four and a quarter inches. But that's a meaty boy. But, um, let me see, what heavy guitars do I have? I don't have anything super, super heavy, but I'll do this PRS. Oh boy, problem. Not a chance. This, holy moly, um, the end of the strap is so completely rigid. So it's gonna have to be something that has small straps already. So I could do my rude revelator. So even then, gonna be a challenge. There we go. Holy cow. These are like the most stout. 
Ow! Like the most stout strap ends. But, there it is. Oh! Oh, I'll find my face. Does that look silly? Like it's so wide. And I understand you would do this for a really heavy base. One thing I do like is that they also throw in a couple of these base blockers or strap blocks. So, and a couple picks. So this is Amamu. Amamu rocks. I'll put a link in the description after this video if you so want one. Um, okay, Amumu. And there's some, there's some picks. I did it. I did the thing. They sent me the thing. They asked me to talk about the thing. It happened. You were here. I was here. We did it. Um, I'll come up with a trivia question at the end, and we'll give this strap away. Someone remind me. Okay. There's that. I have one more thing to open. And um, sorry, I've been trying to figure out when to do this. And this is the moment. This is the moment. All right. This is Sonic Cake. There are a bunch of petals in here from Sonic Cake. Hang on. Sonic Cake? Sonic Cake? You have to get a run into those. There's three petals in here. There is a modulation for, ooh. So it's a chorus, flanger, phaser, tremolo, digital warped dimension. Then there's also an EQ, a 10 band EQ. And okay, I'm gonna have to do a separate video on these because I'm not gonna set these up now. But the levitate, the levitate. Ooh, okay, so these are like Amazon pedals. Um, but they look kind of fun, and I've heard people play them, so. Uh, the Levitate. Okay. Okay, I will, I'm gonna do these, I'll bail on these. I'll open them up real quick. Here's a 10 band EQ, it does things that a 10 band EQ does. Maybe for a better price. But the ones that are already out there, they've made a million of them. This is the one I'm the most excited about. Modulation. So it's chorus, vibrato, tremolo, reverb, not reverb. Uh, chorus, flanger, phaser, tremolo. And uh, it's a fun, I mean, I like the design of their stuff. I mean, they're kind of Amazon. That's their main strategy for selling these. And they don't seem to suck. So I'm excited for that. Okay. With all of that said, let's talk about the words that people use in their listings and the words that people, uh, yeah. This video is entirely because of the genius that is my friend Tom Dill. He's been a patron of the channel for years. I mean, Tom was one of my first patrons, and we've become... Oh, oh boy. Find my face. Find my face, camera. Ha! Why? Why you not find my face? There we go. So Tom has been an amazing supporter of the channel from early on. And so most of this stuff comes from the incredibly fun and talented uh, Dan. So um, Jake says, I have an Amamu acoustic sound hole pickup. Not expensive and it's okay. Not great, but okay. I think that's that strap. It's fine. It's very comfortable. I, I'm surprised at how hard the ends, uh, the end things are. Woo! Almost done at the internship at the base building company. Thank God, seven days to go. But who's counting? Um, Brett Hake says, hello, hello chat, hello. Jeremy, just tuning on to my lunch break. Hope everyone's having a good day. Man, good, I'm glad you're here. Hope you have a good lunch break. What you eating? I just had a salad and pulled pork and it was delicious. And then I like rage ate an apple before the live show. Didn't want to eat an apple. Figured for your earballs, uh, you wouldn't like it. So Sonia's here. Hey, Sonia, how are you? I like Bluebell, Bluebell straps better. I do too. Bluebell straps, if you don't know, handmade straps in Spain. Daniel and I are big fans. I own five of them now. I just, I really, really like them. How about photos that looked like they were supposed to be snapped? Wait, what? What are you talking about? Is that what those are? Okay. I missed it. I don't know what's going on. Okay, well... Let's get into it. This, this video is all about the stuff that is in a listing 
that you can pick up on. It's information that is out there that maybe the person didn't mean to tell you, but you can like infer. And so I want to be careful to not jump to like judgments or just to out people. But my strategy here is like what's happening in my brain when I'm like assessing what people are, are doing, you know, what people are saying. All right, let us get to it. So thanks, with all that said, thank you to Tom Dill uh, for these. There are a couple links and a couple things, and um, there are a couple pictures we'll go to and some listings we'll look at. But number one, uh, a mom selling a kid's gear. And so when you look through this stuff, you're going to see clearly, like, sometimes you'll see stuff that just is such a bare-bones explanation. Electric guitar. Uh, and then we, my favorite is when someone measures it. They're like, it's a 38-inch acoustic guitar. Right? What does that mean? <laughs> like, okay. A um, bunch of guitars are a bunch of different. Like, it doesn't actually mean anything. Um, so, yeah. Oh, man. It's funny. These got, they're out of order. That's why that first one threw me off. Okay. Second thing, um, I'm going to scoot over here just to scooch. Um, the guy selling junk that thinks it's collectible. We have all seen this listing. We've all seen the, oh man, most recently, oh, I can find this. I can find this. Um, it was, where was it? Here it is. Oh, oh, this brings me so much joy. Not this guy's plight, but just how much he misread what this thing was and how he made the critical age old mistake, which is old means expensive. And there are plenty of old guitars that are not expensive at all. So let me show you this. Here we go. Look at this thing. So it's a cool, it's not a bad guitar. It's a Slingerland Maybell style one, you know, there's a little birch, you know, single O style guitar. And, I mean, it probably has some redeeming characteristics, like, doesn't suck, needs some love for sure. But this was a cheap guitar, sold to parents for kids, and um, maybe it taught somebody how to play guitar, but I don't know. But then, you come over here and look at this part, and you realize, like, holy cow, you thought this was a $2,500 guitar. And you've had this out forever, and you're still charging $125 in shipping. So this is someone who just thought that they had the rarest thing ever. Two offers on this, listed for two years, and has not sold. So all of this, the words that aren't telling us, oh, and it has a broken headstock. Look at that. Broken headstock. Oh, boy. Yeah, this one is a complete bail. This one is not worth 100 bucks. And uh, But... He thought it was worth $2,500 to start out. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. How did that... I didn't check. How was the orient, the orientation of that screen when I was sharing it? So if I come back over here and look... Okay, that worked. So... Holy. Yeah, that's one of those things like when you just get somebody... That just thinks somebody is incredible. And yeah, man, they just... Tom! Tom, this is 100% Tom's uh, insight. Most of these, pretty much all of these are just Tom's straight up thoughts. And then I'll just add my, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll add my just perspective on some things. Antoon, hello from Holland. Hi, buddy. Um, Rasmus, I'll give him $25, not a cent more. Yeah, you're, you're not far off. That would be like if I asked 3500 for my L3. I mean, maybe after it gets fixed up by Nathan. Pre-restoration, maybe after? Maybe after, yeah. But man, wild. So yeah, this is one that just, I see this a lot. I see people that just think that what they have is just absolutely incredible. And we are so lucky that they ever sold it. When the reality is this guy probably found that thing at a pawn shop or in a, a grandparent's house or somewhere. And then they're like, it's an old guitar from the 1930s. And it's they start looking and they just get enough information to be very dangerous. And so the big thing is I hope no one actually buys that. But all right, the next one, the fisherman. <laughs> Someone's selling a normal piece of gear for an insane price. That's kind of what this is. Um, this would also be someone that just kind of sits back, has a big collection of stuff, and just waits for Josh Scott to talk about something. And then they just capitalize. Or they, yeah. 
or yeah they're just they're just poised to just get whatever the absurd thing is this is somebody like an example that i've seen before someone selling like a 96 so like a 50th anniversary strat and they'll ask forty five hundred dollars for it when really it's like well it's just an american like it's just an american strat that was made in 1996 it's not custom shop it's not particularly special it was just made that year and you're like it's a sunburst with a special you know neck plate you're like okay well that's all that's really that different about it so yeah everybody's seen the fisherman somebody just you know trying to get crazy stuff oh this all started because i so tom says this all started because i bought a harmony sovereign h1260 this week to mess around with restoring yeah i'm sure yeah i think both of those are probably pretty good recipients of the critique and the criticism on this so it's i blame american pickers and antiques roadshow yeah i think um everyone oh man here's okay everyone has access to the same information but Here's the, this thought hit me as I left the gym this morning as I was thinking about this live show. You and I both have the same, we have access to the same information that like geniuses have access to. And so access to information does not equal wisdom, knowledge, uh, truth. <laughs> and so, I mean, for me, man, I, uh, yeah. So lots of people, oh, am I, seems like I'm coming in hot there. I'm gonna turn this down just to, just to scooch. There we go. Um, so I'm not clipping. Um, I shouldn't clip because I have a leveler. But anyway, okay. So I uh, I find myself I find myself continuing to kind of uh, realize that I am not concerned when people have access to information. Like in the guitar shop now, like it does not freak me out that people like <laughs> people think I don't know what reverb is. Trust me. I know what reverb is. Um, but people are like, oh, um, this used Eastman A445. Um, how much do you, uh, do you think that they offered oven call as a standard back and sides material? And you're like, you know, you, like you didn't just know that. Like you're looking on reverb and you're looking at the listing of this one. So, you know, don't use this one as a comp. We, we're not selling anything on reverb because reverb sucks. <laughs> um, sorry. Old habits die hard. Um, on the road again. It says, hey, Jeremy, looking at getting a garden guitar studio. What that? How much would you recommend spending? Oh, you mean like like a backyard, like a home studio setup? Wait, what? Hang on. Do you have any problems with keeping your guitars outside? I don't keep any guitars outside. Um, yes, I... So I have this studio that you see. This studio has a mini split and it has a humidifier in the winter and a dehumidifier in the summer. And I'm very intent. Like right now I'm at 45% humidity and 73 degrees. Over there under the HVAC, I'm 16% humidity because it's super dry air coming in. I have humidity coming in back there. Anyway, I don't keep guitars outside. I don't totally understand the question. Paul Lawson, hey buddy, how are you? Hey, everybody go follow, uh, go subscribe to Paul Lawson's channel. Young guy, super cool. Um, he's like a high school guy making really cool music, kind of trap stuff and just, I don't know, super creative. And um, the other day he like was walking through his house. One of his reels was like hitting the microwave. Boop, and he's like, that's a B. And I just thought it was so cool just kind of showing like cool music stuff around you. So, um, all right. Yeah, I keep, keep guitars in a humidity controlled room. If it needs to be in your backyard, like if you have a studio or a garage or something, you can do it. Like this was a garage, and then we built a wall, put in insulation, put in a mini split, concrete floor, drywall. And um, I have a metal roof. Like this building was built in uh, 1947. Um, and so the building is pretty rough and old looking on the outside, but we have suspended like a really beautiful um, cube. Cube is equilateral. What would you call... It's like 17 feet by 9 feet. Anyway. Um, but yeah. So go check out Paul Lawson's music. And um, subscri subscribe to his channel. Alright. The next one. After The Fisherman, you get like, who's selling this? And I, have you ever done this? Have you ever checked somebody's profile? To me, it's one of the most helpful things about Facebook Marketplace compared to Craigslist. That way... Okay. I will be more honest than I normally would be. Um, 
yeah, don't worry where this is going. Um, I have pretty much lost the ability to buy and sell guitars locally because people know who I am. And um, so that's why like when people are like, I miss the old guitar hunter where you would go buy guitars from people. And I'm me too. Um, the big thing with this is that I end up, I have now um, just most of the really nice expensive guitars around people i've either bought them from them or i bought them from people that they know so now like i have to have kind of a burner account <clears throat> which i don't have on facebook when i buy and sell stuff on facebook i end up kind of shooting myself in the foot because people then know who i am and they know that i'm either trying to get too much money for selling something or i'm not going to pay them enough in the middle because i buy and sell stuff but um i think it's really helpful to check check out whoever's selling this thing because unlike craigslist you're like it is the void um but with this you can check like all right it's somebody i know or it's somebody that actually plays guitar and you can kind of get some information as to maybe why they're selling this guitar or what kind of negotiating they would do and um i think it's super helpful this one i'm not i'm not ashamed to say that i've done this a good bit Joshua Thaxon says, I've checked people's profiles before and decided I don't want to meet this person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's a story I don't know if I can tell on YouTube. I can tell it. I think. We'll find out. Um, years ago, I don't know what to do with this. I'm using a long lens. Like, it's 85 millimeters. So, the camera is like eight feet over there. So, you can't see what's going on down here below the camera. You can only see here to like my chest anyway um okay i was opening bayou music exchange the guitar shop that i owned in covington louisiana and i wanted to find cool old like wood display cabinets and there were lots of them around i eventually found one uh that was at it was for sale at a flea sh at a flea a flea market in gulf springs mississippi and gulf springs not that far but Mississippi and Louisiana are pretty, pretty different in some ways. In this way, they were quite different. So I went and uh, it was like this old wood cabinet and the guy said he would sell it for $75. And I went and it was the coolest like old oak. And then it had like really cool beveled thick glass like from the 1940s or so. Maybe, no, it was earlier than that. It was 20s or 30s. It was so cool. It had some kind of art deco stuff on the sides. And it was small. It was like 48 inches by maybe 30 inches. And it had two shelves down at the bottom. It came out of a candy store. And so it was just so cool. And it would work perfectly for me to display. Um, I ended up putting uh, guitar pedals in there. And on the first, on the main glass one. And then on the bottom, I put some parts and pick guards and cool stuff that I was selling. So, um... I went to buy this thing and the guy's like, oh, well, I just have to load a couple things out of it. And when I get there, the guy uh, has a swastika tattooed on his eye or like on his cheek right here. And then he's like, can you just help me? He's like, this one, he said, this is like right after President Trump got elected. Uh, he was like, he's like, come on in, man. He's like, I'm, I'm happy today. Our guy got elected. I was like, oh boy. And um, so anyway, he was then like, hey, help me unload all the jewelry. I've been using this to keep jewelry here in the flea market. And it's all SS and swastika and like Nazi stuff, um, like rings and all the stuff that just been sold at a flea market in Mississippi. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. I was like, all right, I'm going to get out of here. So I put it in the back of my car, uh, <laughs> blessed it, exercised it, and uh, came back and sold pedals out of it for a couple of years. And then like, Two years later, after I was closing the guitar shop, I sold it for like 250 bucks um, to a local, another like flea market kind of place. And um, anyway, that's a wild story. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I don't feel bad. Um, I don't feel bad looking at people's profiles because you don't know who you're going to deal with when you actually like get there and like meet somebody. So anyway. You also have to just be cool and unresponsive. Like, don't take the bait. But anyway, I do think it's a good idea to check people's profiles. Next thought um, is, are these the same? Oh, these are the same. There we go. The picture location. Where's the picture? Um, let's go over here and I'll show, and this one will also show another point that I'll show here in a second. Um, 
But, so let me, I'll turn this off. So when you think about the picture location, what do you notice about this? What's in the background? Oh, that looks like a retail space. And if I look in the reflection of this guitar, I can see other amps. And I can see somebody bent over looking at that guitar. And, yeah, like I said, some amps. Now, this one does give it away a bit, because this is a pawn shop. But, as you start looking at it, you start realizing, like, oh, that's probably why this price is so high. Um, and, you know, so some of these, that also means that they had to pay to list this. If you're a commercial business, um, I guess if you are if you are a business listing on Craigslist, you have to pay, I think it's, what, two bucks, five bucks um, to use their service. So we'll just go through and we're just, we're going through. All right. So today we're in Tampa. Oh, hey. Oh, here's a good example. Look at this. Okay. So this is what a D28 and HG, this is a D28, HG28 with a sunburst. Um, it's since 2017 because it has the open gear tuners over here. It's the 1935 burst. Oh, why? Why did someone put this strap button there? Hate it. Kills me. But <laughs> look at this. So the pictures are on a couch. Let's see what we can see in that picture. Somebody's knees. There it is. There's somebody's knees. And there's a logo of some sort. But LR bags. So that's an a, like a proper anthem in there. But it's on a bed. And then you can see that it looks like a bed there. And then later you see it's like a futon with a sandal on the ground. So... This is where, oh man, look at this. Okay, yeah. I have a 2020 Martin HG28 for sale with an LR bags anthem professionally set up by Sweetwater along the 55 point inspection and set up. Pristine condition. Wife says it's, wife says it must go. So he just kind of said it. But what I was assuming in that is this guy, like just looking at the picture. Oh, condition, it's not new. He listed it as new. Not new, you're not a dealer. Um, and... Yeah, so my assumption on this is like, this is a real expensive guitar, um, and he's selling it for almost retail price. I don't think he's going to get this price. Um, but it's just one of those things, like, if you start kind of looking at it, you can kind of pull apart what people are actually kind of saying about their thing. Oh, hang on. Was it on the wrong... I'm sorry. Let me come back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here we go. All right, so here's the guitar. Sorry. <laughs> so here's the couch. It looks like a futon. There's a shoe. How much for that shoe, man? I'll I'll pay your full price. Give me give me just your right flip flop. Um, yeah, LR bags. LR bags upside down. Back to the top. Just a bunch of comments. I have it silenced? What do I have silenced? I'm sorry. I messed up. I know. Too many things going on. All right. Okay. So, I'll take that out. Let me come back over here. Were we here? Were we there? Okay, yeah. So, think about, like, where people take the pictures. Um can't show you the picture and i don't want to talk about it for long but there's a, a friend of mine who sells guitars <laughs> this is a friend of mine that sells guitars a lot in louisiana and a couple years ago he's trying to sell me a guitar during covid um he wanted me to buy one of his guitars and it was a d35 and i was like all right send me pictures and he sent me a picture and it's him in his like in the front entryway of his house so you can see like the, the stack of shoes and mail behind the guitar. And then in the guitar, you could just see a little hairy pot bellied man. Like just, he's literally just perfectly in, in the back of the guitar because it's so dark. The reflection is just like, just him hunched over, big belly, all hairy. And I was like, hey man, like, I don't need those pictures. You can just <laughs> skip those pictures next time. But I do think they kind of tell you um, some of the information about the guitar. So the guy with this in the futon, it's like, well, that's a, a $3,000 guitar. 
And, I mean, you live in an expensive part of the world. You know, you live on the beach in Florida. And then, you know, if it, you know, if you bought it from Sweetwater, chances are you used one of their financing things. And now the bank is coming knocking, looking for that. So that's where there are some, there are some, some definite red flags in my mind. Oh, the strap button was right at the end. I'll come back over here and I'll show you. Nope, hang on, sorry, I went to the wrong one. So, right there. On the end of the neck heel, that kills me, because it just makes the whole, gar whole guitar like flop forward. <clears throat> okay. So, we'll take that out for now. Fingerprints everywhere. That's a good one. Family Schaefer. Hello. Yeah. So, I mean, some of those things, like, where someone takes a picture. I will say, in my continual need for, like, a, um, in my need for finding a, uh, a home for certain, well, when I'm trying to sell certain guitars, I now know if I show somebody, if I take a picture here, they all kind of say the same thing. Why do you have so many guitars? Seems like you have a bunch of other things. Seems like you don't need to negotiate. Like, seems like you're rich. People say that. I am not rich by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I have three little kids and I care a lot about guitars. And all of these guitars have been a result of just like really, really hard work. Um, but man, so I now know that when I'm listing things, if I put these guitars behind it, like I'm trying to sell a $300 or whatever guitar, and all of a sudden I've got, you know, $25,000 worth of guitars on the back line. I know how that looks. I know how people receive that. So this is just a thing that you have to have like on the radar where you take the picture, the context of your picture um, gives more information than you might type out. So anyway, all right, there's next one. Uh, wait, are these the same two? These are the same two. What's happening? They're just, they've copied. Okay, how to spot a pawn shop listing. We talked about this earlier. When you think about the context of a guitar, think about like, oh, it's a slat wall. I don't have slat wall in my house. You don't have slat wall in your house. But pawn shops, guitar shops, retail shops, <clears throat> they will have slat wall for sure. <coughs> uh, yeah, what other, can you think of any other like environment, like what things in a picture might give you some information that you could use for or against the person you're buying from. Kevin Beachy. Hello, Virginia, per fellow Virginia person. Uh, 30 minutes south of you, actually. Hey, that's awesome. In Staunton. Uh, yeah, Stanton or Waynesboro, one of those. What's the ideal environment? I don't know. That's a good question. The, the, the ideal environment for, <clears throat> for buying a guitar? I, there are, there are a few things that will kill a deal for me instantaneously. Number one, uh, number one is like if all of a sudden it has like in the picture, if I'm buying a pedal or anything and it's just covered in cat hair or dog hair, can't handle that. Not into that at all. And it's not even that I'm particularly grossed out by it, but I just, ugh, I don't know. That one gets me. Um, so yeah, like in seller's photos, uh, clothes on the floor. Oh, hey, here's a good one. Um, Joshua has a good one, which is ashtrays nearby. Yeah, it's true. I've bought, um, I bought a guitar a couple of years ago from somebody that just smoked a lot of pot and I just could not get the smell of pot out of, what was that? That was like, that was during YouTube days. It was in the basement over there. Um, back in the old studio, there was some guitar that I had that just, reeked of pot no matter what i did always smelled like pot always 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 i don't remember which guitar but it was like it in the case just smelled like pot continually steward's draft hey buddy all right like in sellers photos yeah 
I have not played a Lakewood guitar. I get asked about it a lot. We looked them up in the shop. Somebody came in asking if I'd ever played one, and I still haven't. So I'm so excited. I just saw the pictures of the neck, and it looks so good, and I know that I asked so much of you by doing a slot headstock. So thanks, man. If you guys haven't, follow Rasmus on Instagram. He's building a guitar for me, and uh, man, it's so good. Was there pot in it? No, there wasn't. Oh, that reminds me. Um, and now that I'm working at Hometown Music, there are a bunch of guys that, that go to Hometown Music that used to come to the guitar shop that I worked in called Guitar and Amp Center. And one of those guys is a retired police officer who told me a hilarious story about the guitar shop that about Guitar and Amp Center. Um, and this was like way before my time working there. But apparently <laughs> there was uh, they were working on an amp and they had to flip the amp upside down to get the chassis out or something. And a couple seeds fell out onto the counter. Uh, or onto like the workbench. And so a couple of the guys were like, wonder what that is. Like, bet it's a tomato plant or something. And they just planted it in a little pot of soil in the bathroom. And then a couple weeks later, plants, you know, four to six inches tall. And then actually there's a uh, Brian Elijah Smith, who's a like local touring, like singer songwriter, old friend of mine. When he was a kid, his dad was also playing guitar, and his dad was a police officer in Harrisonburg. He came in, and he was like, oh, Brian's got to use the bathroom, like a four-year-old at that time. He's like, can we use the bathroom? They go in the bathroom, and while you know they're in the bathroom, they see this little pot plant. And uh, this is back, you know, in the world before when pot was quite very illegal. And, um, and he came out, and he was like, Warren, what are you doing? You're growing pot in the bathroom. And Warren's like, oh, that's pot? I thought it was tomato plants. And, uh, and he's like, no. Uh, and he's like, okay, fine. So they went back and they threw it away. And, uh, it, well, that was kind of the end of that, but it was just a funny, like, what other seeds would you find in guitar amplifiers? Especially, I think it was, well, I wish I could say it was like a sun or yeah, that'd probably be, that would make the most sense. Anyway. That means his stash pot was inside the guitar case. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> there is a market for reefer too. Things I shouldn't say. If you said that, I just read it out loud. Paul Lawson says, "I saw the picture. I saw a picture on Instagram of the guitar that's being built. Dude, it's awesome. Um, Rasmus is amazing, and I'm super excited. I'm gonna fly to. Yeah, we got We're working on a trip now for me to go pick it up in." Uh, the Netherlands and hang out with Rasmus for a weekend or something. So <laughs> it's a waste of a weed plant. I don't, this was like before you were alive, I'm sure. And it was back in the days when like any pot possession was a ride to the courthouse uh, or to, yeah, to the police station. I hate it when you see finger, finger oil crud build up on fretboards and it's, and it's actually green. I've seen it in the actual guitar shops from people's homes. Yuck. Um, okay, I'm coming back over here. This one, this one, this one. How to spot a pawn shop listing? We talked about this one. Um, yeah, how to spot a pawn shop. I mean, when people have stuff that isn't your house, but that's stuff they would show you in the pictures. Now, the other one is like the trade only guy. And the, this is the guy that is just working his way up to a guitar. But, and I know I've never been a trade guy. Um, but usually this is, and I don't mean to anecdotally this is the guy whose wife doesn't want him spending a lot of money on guitars and so he has to make do with what he has and he has to trade them and so i knew a couple of these guys that would only do trades what do you have what do you what, what could you trade well uh, you can give me that one and uh you but the problem that always happens in trades is that you don't get enough um you don't get enough cash like if things are not apples to apples then you got to figure out like, well, I'll throw you in um, my pedal board and this extra power supply. And I have an old drum head back there. And um, OK, well, now <laughs> um, how about that? And then I'll throw in I'll play guitar for free at your cousin's wedding. OK, at the VFW. OK, got it. We got a deal. That's the that's the kind of trades that I 
think are hilarious, but I also avoid. Um, but yeah, there you'll you'll run into the guy that's like trades only. Um, I also love. I did it on the on my air guitar. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Um, this is my 1988 air guitar, and it's very light, and the body is really. I mean, it's just kind of. I mean, it has a really like ethereal kind of feeling to it. Good environmental. Um, yeah, action is super light. And uh, anyway, so this is my air guitar. And with this, uh, I mean, just lots of people, I've just had to really, I mean, like I know what I have. Um, and so it is, I mean, it is on sale it, or it is for sale, but it is not on sale. And so anyway, um, just a lot of that, you know, you, you just, I know what I've got. Okay. Oh, I got that. Um, the other trick is when somebody has multiple listings. That's that's an easy one to spot, and it's easier to spot when somebody has a good spot to take pictures, and then they just swap out the guitars. I am very bad about this because I have a really good looking spot to take pictures of guitars with good lights, and um, man, it just over and over and over. I get myself in trouble. Not trouble, but it's now getting to a place where people don't pay what I'm asking and don't sell for what I'm asking. <laughs> um, yeah, just as I, as I talk to people around here. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, I, I saw your email. Sorry. I've been running a gun in this week. Um, Puerto Rican musician socialist, dude, I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, I'm glad you're back. Um, one of the OGs of the Instagram, of the YouTube live game from years ago. Uh, but if you ever use acrylic nails, I just broke my thumb and it took me months to grow and I can't play any of my flamenco finger style stuff. By the way, I don't care about how people judge me with my nails. They're an idiot. They're not idiots. They're just, yeah. Anyway, let's answer the question. Um, yes, I have used acrylic nails. I, for years, probably three years, I did acrylic nails, but I found it was really bad, really hard on my fingernail beds. Um, and eventually, cause they just, they're sanding your, th your fingernails and they just got so thin and, um, it's really not comfortable after a while. So anyway. It is the best way for trading. It is the best way to get magical legumes. Uh, Jim's magical dancing legumes. Um, I probably won't do a trade because I because you could get money, but you could get a bunch of random crap that you don't want. Yes, that's true. People just throw in stuff. So, yeah. Typical Epiphone QC, but otherwise perfect guitar. That's a good line. That is good. Yeah, so uh, multiple listings when you start seeing like people are selling a couple things. Then you can kind of piece together and it they may be doing like a gear purge. That's what, so most of these notes come from, uh, from Tom. And so a lot of times it's like, well, if they have four guitars for sale, we probably do some horse trading and like get them all, you know, get a group together where you say like, hey, would you take... 70% of what you're asking, 60% of what you're asking, and I'll just buy all of them. I'll buy all four of them, and, you know, that way, you know, you got money, I've got money, and we're all happy. The next one is the guy who knows what he's got. <laughs> Every town seems to have one of these guys. I always miss the meetings when they decide who that guy's going to be because I like to think that I know what I've got, and um, it's good. I like it. It's funny to me. It's sad to me as well. Um, I don't like, I really makes me sad when people gatekeep and keep people out of guitar culture. Um, I think that this is a common, like Uncle Rico, like they missed their moment. That's a good way to ruin your life is to believe that you missed your chance. You missed your moment. And, um, and so a lot of these guys are like, man, if we just, somebody said this in the shop this morning, somebody was like, man, if, you know, if, if I would have got that song on WXJM, you know, the local public radio station. If I would have got it on there, I know some producer would have heard it. We would have gotten picked up on a tour. And man, just we just wasted our lives sitting around here playing just these dumb VFW gigs. And um, yeah, it's just a dude like late 40s, early 50s that just can't get over 
Um, he just really thinks that he missed his, cha- his chance and has messed with him his whole life. So anyway, same thing with the gu- with guitars and gear. Usually this is code for I spent too much money and I owe money on a credit card and I've got to sell this. Um, or it's people that do properly have it outright, um, but they're hanging out. They're the fishermen. They're hanging out looking for like crazy, crazy, crazy price. Um, so yeah. Yeah, seriously. Trades only work when you can flip the throw-in items, which is a which is a pain in the keister. It's true. It really is annoying. <laughs> I get it, Tom. Tom's Tom's gone for real. Like you've got some really cool stuff now. Um and then uh the other the other guy, which I've meant to ask you, Tom, have you met uh Rich uh Weinstock yet? who runs Rich Allen Vintage Guitars. I feel like you two would really like each other. And you're both in Florida, and I think you're in about the same part of Florida. I think he's in Sarasota. So you guys are close. I'll, I'll connect you guys. But um, he's doing a lot of like buying and selling, wheeling and dealing, a little more on the acoustic side than you. But I know what I got. <clears throat> Josh Joshua Thaxton says, "I saw a listing today claiming that the guitar was owned by Dwayne jo- by Dwayne Johnson. That'd be awesome. I'd buy any guitar owned by Dwayne Johnson's cousin, by Dwayne Allman's cousin. My cousins owned a bunch of stuff too. Um, man, that is funny. Cause what's the provenance? Does it matter? Like, can you prove it? Does anyone care that you can prove it? That's funny. I like that one." He had it listed as the title listing was Almond Bro- Almond Bros Connection or something like that. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, you haven't met Rich. That's about two hours away. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. I like that. Um. All right, slide sixteen. The Candyman. Um, this is one of the best ones. And Tom, I came up with the name, the candy man, but Tom firmly had this idea, which is you get, there are certain people that have kept every detail and they are the right person to buy stuff from. You're not going to get a crazy deal, but you're going to get, what is it? The floor ticket? What do you call that? The traveler ticket, floor traveler. That's what it is. Um, when you get like all of the stuffs you get, um, I can show you. I have the FERC stuff in here somewhere. I'm not a good guitar owner. I don't keep the stuff in the box. Here it is. So in a FERC, when they come, they show up in a... Like a certificate of ownership. Now this isn't even as intense as Fender's really good about this. But in this one... Like you would see, come on, focus. So you see the certificate of authenticity. So this one is the Vintage 2, the Vintage 2 OMSR. And I mean, it just says all the stuff. So it's uh, Sitka Spruce top, it's Indian Rosewood back and sides, it's an ebony bridge and fingerboard, an African mahogany, it's a Kaya neck. But yeah, so you start getting to where some of these deals, like especially Fender Custom Shop, is so fun for this stuff Um, because they will have I mean the extra goodies they'll have the strap and the extra bridge and the trim arm and they'll have you know the floor traveler document they'll have the receipt from who they owned it from so that's where like the candy man Um, I also love buying guitars like this that come with like picks and straps and capos and that stuff doesn't add money, but it adds like value to me. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a funny little etiquette kind of thing. I've bought a bunch of guitars in my life and then the deal is done. Money is in their pocket. The guitar is in my hands and I go to walk away and they're like, Oh, sorry, I wanted to get some stuff out of the case. And one time a guy opened it up and he wanted to take, uh, his IntelliTouch tuner, which at that time they were like 75 bucks new and used, you can sell them for 40 bucks. And he had a Sunshine pickup in there that's like $250. And he had uh, a, an Elliott Capo. And at the end, he was like, Oh, sorry, I want to take that stuff out. I was like, Sorry, man. 
that was the deal. The deal is this guitar and all the stuff in it. And so, yeah, Case Candy conveys. And, um, yeah, unless you really, like, if you want that stuff out, take it out before we start making the deal. Have you guys had that? I've had that a handful of times. And it's pretty intense. Um, yeah. Tom, seriously, this is like, this entire show is from, is from Tom. And just my perspective on it. John, I know what I've got too. Doesn't make it worth anymore. Yeah. Ears in the old days. Ears in the old days. Bird dogs would rent a, would rent a motel room, have a have an ad in the paper, and bring guitars to sell them. Yeah. Ever since, ever since that. You're a bit young, I know. Sorry, my reading comprehension has dropped off in my mid thirties. Um, but yeah, I think that's where people would get hotel rooms, put an ad, buy and sell guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that bourgeois guitars are worth the money? I'm seeing them go for $10,000 astronomical now nowadays, especially when compared to the Martin Custom Shop. How much, how much of it is prestige? I think the bourgeois has rightfully earned the place in the obscene price category. They're still kind of like, I mean, look into hand-built guitars. Look into Gage Halland. Look into uh, Leo Buendia. Look into, uh, I mean, Jim, Jim Olson is now retired. But you start looking into hand-built guitars, like they're all $20,000. Um, but I think the bourgeois, I think for the combination of a couple things, I think they have Brazilian rows that they've done. They've always used the absolute best quality, and they have not compromised. Now, with that said... It's a real big deal that they've brought out that they're now owned by Eastman and they bring out the uh, the Touchstone series. I think that's a big move uh, in the market, and it does really change the the brand and the perceived value of their brand. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm into it more than I'm not more than I'm upset about it. What was the what was what was a hard one to walk away from because of something small or weird? I walked away from a 71 D18 in Baton Rouge maybe six years ago um, because I got there and the sides looked like they'd been refinished. It wasn't a huge deal. It's the sides. The top was good. The back was good. The bridge was good. But the sides were wrong and they were a different color. They were like a chocolatey brown and then, or sorry, they were um, like a kind of a rusty brick red and the back was a chocolate brown, kind of the way it should have been. And so it just psyched me out and they didn't know the history. It was a guitar that they had just come by. Um, they wouldn't, they were kind of shady with details. So that's one that I walked away from. Um, the other one I walked away from, and I, I've been meaning to make a video about this. I've never spent a single dollar at Guitar Center. I've tried twice and both times the same dumb thing happened which is um, I made a deal with the with the used guitar person um, in the Birmingham. No, it is in, maybe it was Birmingham. No, sorry, I'm going to track this down. In Jackson, Mississippi, that's where this one was. In Jackson, Mississippi, I went and I found a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier 50 in a 212 cabinet. It was red with basket weave for the grill cloth. I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And they're selling it for $850. And so I went and I was like, I will take this. Immediately, I will buy this. And I went up and I gave them my debit card. They paid, they charged it. And then as I was picking it up, I was like, all right, thanks, guys. It's been so good. They're like, oh, well, you can't keep it. Look on your receipt. It says it has to stay here for 36 more days. It's like, What? And they're like, oh yeah, it's um, because this gets, because this amp is used. You know, our store policy is that we have to hold things for forty days. It was like six weeks. We have to hold stuff so that um, it's not stolen. It's like, why would you not tell me that until now? Why would you have it out on the floor? Why would you negotiate? I told you I'm from New Orleans. Why would all of this happen? And they're like, sorry, man, but you can come back when you want, but we can't refund you. We can give you store credit. I was like, no, you are refunding me. We're undoing all of this deal. So anyway, um, yeah, I want to make a video about why I've never spent any money at Guitar Center. I haven't even bought strings, like literally never spent any money at Guitar Center. 
And I understand it's kind of me being like a guy yelling at the sun. And, you know, like, I always feel like that'll show them in a totally facetious way. Like, me not buying from Guitar Center. Maybe if I would have, they wouldn't have been in bankrupt bankruptcy like nine times and now gotten junk stock rating. When I sell a guitar, I always include the Oasis humidifier to prove that the guitar has been well cared for. That's a good thought. Whether you do or not, just make sure it's there when you when you get rid of it. That's really good. I always restring guitars before I sell them. So I mean that's that feels pretty obvious. But I try to that's I hadn't thought about like how you present when you sell. That's worth the price of admission. Patty, that is so good. Once you pay once you play them, you'll understand why they cost more and they're worth it. Spend five thousand dollars on Santa Cruz and eighteen hundred on Santa Cruz. Best decisions of my life besides marrying my wife. Hey, that's good. I yeah, there's something magical in that last like here's the thing. Like a bourgeois compared to a Martin Custom shop is five percent better, seven percent better, but you see that is the logarithmic like vertical climb um, or the exponential difference in quality to money and that's where you start seeing like to get a guitar that is twice as good it's not doubling your money it's usually like quadrupling your money and it's just to get better always is like double the amount of money to get a little better each time and um, there's kind of a half light on this sonia this is a really good one hate to bring up the woman thing but it's scarier for us to meet some random guy for a sale with a lot of cash i would i would only do it at a shopping center parking lot where there's lots of people yeah I absolutely get that. And I would, I do the same thing. I don't go to people's houses. People don't come to my house. Um, we go to a place that people know that I'm meeting someone, like my wife. I'm always like, hey, I'm going over to meet this guy. I've got $4,500 in my pocket. Um, yeah, I totally get that. That's incredibly valid. And I can't imagine how much more ratcheted it up is, how much more that would be ratcheted up being a woman. And just, yeah, that's a lot. That happened to you in the Wilmington, Delaware Guitar Center? Shame on them. It's a, yeah, I'm sure it is a law in some places. I've heard that too. Um, there are places now that kind of do these like uh, they'll do these things where they like kind of make you do the deal um, if you're buying private party. And we've talked about this. Like in Louisiana, they started doing these like online transaction locations and they're right at the police station but they do it and they make you like check in and then they say here how much was the declared value of that guitar oh look here's the tax office you can pay um your sales tax even though the law in virginia or in louisiana at the time can't speak for it now um was that like cash transactions i don't know might well i came into this sentence with a lot of confidence and it waned immediately, as I know Daniel is an attorney and is actually listening. Um, but I know in Louisiana, you could have private party purchases and you wouldn't have to declare the transaction. Um, and I think a lot of people do that. Yeah, what's the sketchiest sale you've ever made? I remember your Laravel OM9 story. Um, that's about it. That's about my craziest. Um, that or the um, the super sweaty tube sock short shorts guy in New Orleans that my wife was like, nope, we're done. We're out of here. We're leaving. Pack it up. Let's go. Nathan. <laughs> Ignore me. Keep confident. <laughs> Uh, no, I will keep confident. And then Daniel, you can, you can send me like text later on saying, actually, that's bad advice. Um, Greg Oaks, are you the Greg Oaks from my high, are you my high school band teacher? I think he had an E in his name. I sure do not trade a, anything. I sure do not trade anything in there. Tried a few times with insulting trade in money. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's so hard. It's so, so hard to uh, get apples to apples. Um, especially when you're like, I have a guitar, you have a guitar. Well, this one, if I would sell it, I'd get $1,200. If I'd sell yours, I'd get $700. 
And then you're like, well, I'll throw in my dog. And you're like, you're like, I don't want a dog. So anyway, um, Nathan says, I've only ever bought strings and capers from Guitar Center and only in a pinch. Yeah. Um, I, would, I could also say about Guitar Center. I just have never lived that close to one. The closest I've ever been to one is about 45 minutes. There was one in New Orleans, or like one in Harahan, like a suburb of New Orleans towards Baton Rouge. And then there was also one in Baton Rouge. Both were pretty awful and didn't have stuff. Um, so I, but I was also more, I've bought lots of guitar stuff on Amazon, which I'm not proud of. Um, so now that I work at Hometown Music, we've now worked out deals sort of like where we try to be as close as we can um, to, and we're almost always like right on the same uh, like website published price as um, Sweetwater and those for guitar strings. So, and we can always do better in person. I mean, the big the big hamstring thing, it's not a hamstring. It's really good because it helps level out the buying power of big shops and little shops is minimum advertisable price. So I just can't, I can sell you something for less than that price, but I just can't put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, put it in an ad or on a magazine or whatever. So anyway. Oh, thanks, Greg. I think you've told me that before. I think I've made that same joke. I hate buyers that don't show up or give last minute notice. Yup. That's the worst. I've been there. I've driven, you know, maybe a handful of times in my life. I've driven like an hour to some place and then they just don't show up. And they're like, uh, you coming? And then you see them see it and not respond. So, yeah, not fun. I sold Guitar Center a lot of stuff during COVID when they had no inventory. Got decent money. I will say, I have sold two guitars to, more than that, but I've sold two guitars in particular to Sam Ash and made unbelievable money. Um, one time I bought a, uh, I bought a Taylor 355 L7, 7, L7, um, that was a limited edition. It was African Blackwood back and sides. And it was a 12 string and it had a hard case. It was in like minty condition. It belonged to my friend, Jamie. He sold it cause he was going to seminary and I bought it from him for $900. And then I took it to say, I had it on Craigslist and someone from Craigslist said, Hey, I'm with Sam Ash. Why don't you come and blah, blah, blah. Um, see if we'd want to buy it. And so I was like, okay. And I went and they said, um, Mr. Ash himself wants to buy this guitar. He owns six of the other, there are seven models. He owns six of the eight models that they released with African Blackwood, would you, um, he would like to buy this and he would give you $3,500. And so I sold my $900 12 string for $3,500 with a cool profit. Hang on. Tw right? $2,600. And, um, which was amazing. I basically paid for a semester of college on that one. Then I went and tracked down because the same shop also sold. He didn't have the 14 the 314 version. So I tracked that down and I came back and he paid me $4,000 for the 314. So anyway, it was awesome. And uh, yeah. All right. Pre-war guitars. We've been working on doing a video together to go hang out and I just haven't gotten there yet, but they're in North Carolina. They're not far from me, um, but we want to get together and do some stuff and talk about guitars and, um, but yeah, so we're working on it. All right. Um, I think that might be, I thought maybe I have one more. Ah, okay. eBay sellers. P part and stuff. Anyway. Um, yeah, with this one, the Candyman, eBay sellers that are parting stuff out, especially if you see parts online. You see this more in bigger markets, but you'll see someone that, like, they, they'll have a, a guitar for a couple weeks, and if it doesn't sell, then it all of a sudden erupt into, like, six different listings where it's, like, just the neck, just the body, just the pickups. So, <clears throat> anyway. You can also find stuff... Because nobody's going to take multiple pictures for different places that they're selling it. So if you find a thing on Reverb, I mean, that's that happens more often than not. You'll find something unusual on Craigslist, go search for it online, and then you'll see the Reverb listing for it. And some people, you might not catch that it's the same thing, and you'll take that as a comp. <clears throat> when the reality is... It's not a comp. It's the same thing. And that one hasn't sold either. And so you have to look and find actual comps that, that have actually sold and closed around you. So, um, 
Well, this is 2007. 2000, yeah, 2006, 2007. I have to remember what car I used. This is when I had a Nissan Maxima. So that's, yeah, so that's when I drove out there. Played a Boucher guitar center that sounded awful. Action was stupid high. Strings were very old. Disappointed because I couldn't tell how good the guitar could have been. I'm sure it would have been great. Boucher makes really good guitars. I can confirm uh, June 13th to the 15th, I'm going to be in Canada. Uh, I'm going to Quebec, and I've never been to Canada. And so I'm going up. I'm going to hang out with Robin Boucher and Guillaume, who is the coolest of... Uh, he's the national sales manager for Boucher Guitar. So I'm going to hang out with them. I'm going to see how they make guitars. And we're just going to do some really fun, cool stuff while we're up there with them. So anyway, um, that is all I've got for today. Um, no, I... The guy lives kind of... He's like an hour from me and I just haven't been able to get to him. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. And thanks for the community of, for guitar nerds like us. I like that you push for the joy and community that guitar brings. Me too. That's, dude, that's just, that's like, you know, if I get cut, that's what I bleed. Like people in place and guitar and creativity and make the world a better place. And uh, just, yeah. I almost said bully the people that need to be bullied. I don't know if I believe that. But um, I think that you got to make it count. I think that life is an incredible gift and we're made with purpose we didn't we're not made out of chaos we're made out of peace and um, we're made to create so and to bring about flourishing so that's why i always say go fill the world with music and friendship that comes from a guy i bought a d35 from in brobridge louisiana who had just been diagnosed with alzheimer's and his wife had just passed away from dementia a few months beforehand and he was afraid that no one would remember him and so he wanted me to take his guitar strap and that's why I keep, where'd it go? Here it is. That's why I keep the Dale guitar strap. Dane, not Dale. But I keep this strap on my guitar because he told me that he wanted me to take this strap and uh, to go fill the world with music and friendship. That was his, that was his phrase. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. This has been super fun. And, uh, you guys are great. I'm thankful for the community. Oh, last name droppy things. There are there's some fun new merch in the shop. There is also uh, there's brand new coffee just roasted a couple days ago. So go buy those. I also dropped the price on coffee, so it's cheaper than it ever has been. No, sorry. Coffee's more affordable than it ever has been, and um, that's a great way to to support the channel. And um, yeah, thanks for all your support and kindness. This is episode 110 of Guitar Hunter Life. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Oh, guitar strap, guitar strap. Good. <coughs> all right. To win the Amumu, the giant. The, what was it? Somebody said this was the Cardi B of guitar straps. All right. Here's your chance to win it. Um, here's the trivia question. What was I buying in the Guitar Center? Yeah, what was I buying in the Guitar Center when they said, you can't have it, you have to come back in a couple months um, to pick it up? Do you remember? It was an amplifier. It wasn't coffee acid reflux, because I gave up coffee for, um, for Lent, which I miss it. T is okay. It was a Mesa. Yeah. Let's see. Joshua Thaxton. J Thax. All right, so uh, Joshua, you can email me. Actually, email my assistant, and she'll handle it. So it is assistant at jeremyshepard.com, J-E-R-E-M-Y-S-H-E-P-P-A-R-D, and this thing is yours. I'll mail it to you, and uh, I'll also throw in some uh, Guitar Hunter stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, perfect. Joshua, thank you, man. Kevin says, Jeremy, I hope you end up with that Gibson of mine. 
It's like Gordon Ramsay eating ramen noodles. Just don't make sense. Uh, man, I I would love to have it. I'm I'm in guitar selling mode, and uh, but they keep showing up. So anyway, all right. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy. I'm the guitar hunter. Like I said, go fill the world with music and friendship. Bye.